Good evening, everyone. I've been researching depression for nearly two decades. I've been a pioneer of precision medicine in psychiatry. I call it precision mental health. I led several of the first international studies to use brain measures to personalize treatments for depression. And those trials empowered my journey to my current position as a Vincent V.C. Wu Professor of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences. Several years ago, my commitment to precision mental health became deeply personal. My partner suffered from depression for many years. When the pain became too great, he took his own life. He was a physician, but he felt too stigmatized to seek treatment. He feared that having depression on his record would jeopardize his career. That experience has fueled my increasing sense of urgency for new solutions. In my research, many people reach out to me with experiences similar to those of my partner. One of those people is Jane. She reached out when she was losing hope. If I was following standard practice, I would not have tests to offer Jane. I would observe her symptoms, I would arrive at a diagnosis of depression that is a kind of one-size-fits-all. I wouldn't know what treatment would work for her. Likely, we'd cycle through different treatments over months or even years. But if Jane was a cardiology patient, I could offer her tests, MRIs, EKGs, and I would narrow down her diagnosis and treatment. I share with you tonight the hope we are creating through bringing tests into precision mental health. I have developed the Stanford Etsiri brain imaging technology. It brings together measures of the brain with machine learning to identify specific subtypes of depression they are called biotypes, and six of them are shown here. We combine these in a way that enables us to move from the one-size-fits-all approach to a more personalized approach, matching individual treatments to each person's biotype. This technology relies on measuring six circuits of the human brain. They're like superhighways. Let's look at them. Three of them are measured when the brain is at rest. The default mode in blue helps us reflect on our internal thoughts, our memories, and our past. The Sadian circuit in green detects significance, like internal states of pain or changes in the environment. The yellow attention circuit maintains our attention and our focus. I then measure three additional circuits when the brain is responding to tasks. The negative affect circuit in orange responds to sadness and fear. The positive affect circuit in purple, also known as the reward circuit, responds to immediate rewards like food or longer-term rewards like social connection and our sense of purpose. The red cognitive control circuit is our brain's executive. It navigates our environment and enables us to suppress distractions. These circuits are measured in a way similar to cardiology. In cardiology, we use MRI to measure the heart at rest and during stress tasks. It enables us to narrow down on the root cause of a broad symptom like chest pain. Now, with my technology, we can do something similar for psychiatry. We can image the brain at rest and during tasks 
and narrow down to the root cause in the biotype, underlying a broad symptom like emotional pain in depression. Now that we have this technology, I could offer it to Jane. She came in and we scanned her brain with functional MRI. We create a kind of movie of the brain at rest and during tasks. With those data, we measure the six brain circuits and we pinpoint Jane's specific biotype. From these data, we generate a personalized precision mental health report. Let's have a look at Jane's report. In her report, we look from left to right. On the left, we see that the structure of her brain is intact, the anatomy. In the middle panels are her brain circuits. She had a score of only 1.6 on that red cognitive control circuit. That tells us she meets our criteria for the cognitive control biotype. We're looking for something around five, not too high and not too low. In Jane's case, she also had very low cognitive scores and severe cognitive symptoms and overall depression. Let's zoom in on her scores. That score of 1.6 was present across each individual brain region, making up this cognitive control biotype. And what I know from my research is that this cognitive biotype of depression does not respond to standard antidepressants. It also has a fourfold higher risk of suicide. So we need a different solution. For Jane, we chose a targeted medication called guamfacine. Guamfacine targets this brain circuit. We treated Jane for seven weeks and saw a remarkable improvement. Her scores restored into the healthy range. Now, with this technology, we are making it available to many more people through our precision mental health trials. The results are remarkable. Let's remind ourselves of what we're comparing to. In the one-size-fits-all approach, you or your loved one would, on average, takes seven years to find the right depression treatment. No testing, no biotypes. Even after that long time, which is like waiting for stage four cancer, the response rate is only 33%. With my biotype technology, we're changing this situation. With biotypes, we can reduce that time to just seven weeks. And in doing so, we increase the response rate by more than double, over 70%. Now, with this breakthrough, we have the opportunity to save thousands of lives. We are adding AI. That enables us to expand to many more biotypes and match them to many more treatments. Here at Stanford, we are in the ideal position to rapidly accelerate this game-changing technology. We are poised to be the flagship destination center for precision mental health. Welcome to the revolution in precision mental health. Thank you.